House Manderley is a proud and noble house of the North whose seat is the New Castle located in the city of White Harbor. They are considered the richest of the Northmen's bannermen due to their thriving port and the riches they brought with them from the Reach. Their sigil is a white merman carrying a trident with dark green hair, beard, and tail over a blue-green field. Their house words are unknown. Though they reside in the North, they follow the faith of the Seven, not the Old Gods, which is very rare in the North. And this is because the Manderleys didn't originate in the North. Let's start all the way at the beginning with what we know about House Manderley. House Manderley, who descended from the First Men, first lived along the Mander and the Reach, and were an ancient line. It is even believed that the River Mander was named after them. Their castle was called Dunstanbury, and they had an intense rivalry with House Peak. Their fighting with them was so bad, at times the current king of the Reach would have to step in and settle matters between the two houses. Such as when King Gwain the Third Gardener, called Gwain the Fat, managed to persuade the Lords Manderley and Peak to accept his judgment on their quarrel and do fealty for their lands without bloodshed. They would continue their feud over the centuries. Near the end of the reign of King Garth X Gardener, a succession problem arose as the king was old and senile, but only had daughters, no sons. One daughter was married to Lord Manderley, while the other was married to Lord Peak. Both lords, of course, thought their wife should sit the throne, and conspiracy, murder, and betrayal occurred until an open war began with lords joining both sides. This chaos lasted almost a decade until the High Steward of High Garden, Sir Osmond Tyrell, managed to make common cause with the other lords of the Reach and defeated both the Manderleys and the Peaks. The High Steward then placed a distant cousin of the late Garth Tenth on the throne, who became King Mern the Sixth Gardener. About a thousand years before the start of the novels, though other characters claim it was only 900 years ago, House Manderley would either leave or be driven out of the Reach. It is said the house overreached itself and was repelled by the Green Hands, or the Gardener Kings. Maester Yandel claims that the exile of House Manderley was due to Lord Lorimar Peak upon the request of King Perseon III Gardener, who feared the Manderleys were growing too powerful and influential in the Reach. Helping rid the Reach of the Manderleys allowed House Peak to then take the Manderley seat. This was a big win for House Peak and must have been a brutal slap in the face for House Manderley. Homeless and friendless, the Manderleys fled to the north. There they were welcomed by the Starks of Winterfell who protected them and gave them the Wolf's Den. In return for the Den, the Manderleys had to swear an oath to always be loyal subjects of House Stark, and they were tasked with defending the White Knife, a vital river in the north that had defensive problems in the past. But under House Manderley, the river would finally become secure. Because of what the Starks did for them, giving them a home when they had nothing, the Manderleys have remained fiercely loyal to the Starks. Although some in the North have made some disparaging comments about Manderleys being cowards who ran from the South, and that that same coward blood still runs in their veins. However, that may be the view of only a few people, and most likely not the general consensus of the North. But it is reasonable to assume some of the North didn't like the Manderleys settling there. The Manderleys' current reputation also isn't helped by Lord Wyman Manderley, who is very obese, which is looked down on. After making their home in the north, they were given all the lands and houses east of the mouth of the White Knife to control, including Flint of Widow's Watch, Sheep's Head Hills, Woolfield, and Broken Branch. This gave them dozens of petty lords and a hundred landed knights as their bannermen. The Manderleys would build the city of White Harbor with the wealth they brought from the Reach, and they continued to develop it over the centuries. It is considered the smallest of the five cities of Westeros, but it is the main northern port for commerce and naval transport. The Manderleys would later build New Castle to replace the Wolf's Den, and eventually they would turn the Wolf's Den into a prison. The New Castle was built to resemble their castle in the Reach. Because of this, it has more in common with the fine castles and towers of the Reach, and looks a bit different than the castles in the North. Despite living in the North, the Manderleys would hold on to their faith of the Seven, and continue a strong tradition of knighthood. However, they do have a god's wood behind the crumbling walls of the Wolf's Den. During the reign of the Targaryens, the Manderleys would continue to serve their Stark Lords, now Wardens of the North, and the Targaryen Kings. During the Great Council of 101, they would support Rhaenys Targaryen. 
Princess Vasira Targaryen, the daughter of King Jaehaerys I and Queen Alysanne, would be betrothed to Lord Manderley, but she would die after racing drunk through the streets of King's Landing and falling off her horse. Later, Lady Jane Manderley would marry Rickon Stark, the eldest son of Lord Cregan Stark, and give him two daughters, Serena and Sansa. Later still, Mariami Manderley would marry Rodwell Stark and become Lady of Winterfell when her husband became Lord of Winterfell. Under House Stark, the Manderleys would be dragged into conflict from time to time, answering when their liege lords asked for help. But under the dragons, they were also dragged into conflict. When the Dance of the Dragons occurred in 129 AC, White Harbor would receive a visit from Jacare's Valarian, and he convinced them to join Rhaenyra Targaryen's side, the Blacks. Lord Manderley would send men to fight on her side, led by his sons Sir Medric and Sir Torin. The brothers would remain loyal to her throughout the war. Here are the actions by the two Manderley brothers that we know of during the Dance of the Dragons. After Rhaenyra was betrayed by two dragon seeds and lost two dragons, the brothers would urge Rhaenyra, along with others, to seize Adam Valarian and the girl Nettles, also dragon seeds, worried that they would also betray her. Torn would tell Rhaenyra, best take no chances. If the foes gain two more dragons, we are lost. Later, when a riot broke out in King's Landing while Rhaenyra held it, Medric Manderley would lead a hundred White Harbor men the next day to restore some order to the area northeast of Aegon's High Hill, down to the Iron Gate, while others restored order in other areas. Torn Manderley would lead his Northmen down the Hook, but would be overwhelmed by rioters that had formed under one man, and he would lose a quarter of his fighting men trying to get back to the Red Keep. After another night of rioting, and it being obvious Rhaenyra had lost King's Landing, she would flee with the two Manderley brothers along with others still loyal to her. At one point, Sir Medric Manderley would attempt to persuade her to accompany him and his brother to White Harbor, but Rhaenyra would refuse him, going back to Dragonstone instead. That would end the Manderleys' involvement with Rhaenyra. After the war was over, Torn would serve as one of the regents for King Aegon III Targaryen, Rhaenyra's son, but he would resign in 132 AC after the deaths of his father and brother from winter fever. He would come back to King's Landing to serve as the Hand of the King during Aegon III's regency, but in 136 AC, when Aegon III came of age, he would dismiss Lord Manderley. Fast forward to Robert's Rebellion, the Manderleys would answer Ned Stark's call to banners, and Lord Wyman Manderley would lead his bannermen south. Lord Wyman Manderley fought in the Battle of the Trident, and during this time rewarded his retainer, Sir Bartimus, for saving his life, and made him the Castellan of the Wolf's Den now White Harbor's prison. Lord Wyman Manderley, later in life, would become a very large man. So large, he wouldn't be able to sit a horse anymore and be given cruel nicknames. However, he is also described as an intelligent man, easy to laugh. Lord Manderley would have two sons, Willis and Wendell. Willis has two children of his own, both daughters. That concludes House Manderley's history before the books. If you want a refresher on what the Manderleys were up to during the books, check out the House Manderley book recap video. So thank you for watching. Make sure you like this video. It actually helps out the channel and the video a ton. Besides that, make sure you come back twice a week for new Game of Thrones A Song of Ice and Fire videos.